All right, guys, welcome back. Happy Saturday. I got to get a haircut in less than an hour, so I just wanted to get out this story real quick. Feels kind of awesome being back in like this OG style type, you know, type situation. But anyway, man, I'm not sure if I'm going to get an uh, interview today. I, I still have some work to do. Just got back from the thrift store and all that. Got to get a haircut in less than an hour and then come back and you know, do some work. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm going to take you back to right before I just got sent to prison. And this is a uh, county jail type story. County jail story. Jail's crazy, dude. Jail is crazy. I'm sure you've heard it before that most people would, would rather be in prison versus in jail. If you're in prison and you have a date set right if you have a date you know when you're going to get out right when you're due to get out your projected release date as long as you don't get in any funk in there you know you should be going home in one piece and that's the goal but in county anxiety is high it's it's a small community just like like prison but pending on the jail it's like its own little community, its own environment. And the majority of people in jail are like waiting for waiting for a court date. And so Omar, what's up, dude? What's up, bud? What are you doing, bud? Sorry, Omar wanted some love and anyway. So yeah. The, the the difference, man, there, there's actually a huge difference in the caliber, like the whole temperature of jail. Because as I just said before, I was rudely interrupted that people, the majority of people in jail, you know, they're waiting on a court date. They have a court date pending. They are unsure what is going to happen to them, right? They don't know if they're going to get released. They don't know if they're going to um, get sent to prison and do some time, right? Obviously, some people will be doing life while you're in county. They know that. So they just want to get sent to a yard and just start doing their time. It's really helpful in prison to develop, for one, stay out the, the mix. Stay out the mess. Stay out the gangs. Just do what it takes to mind your business, act like a man, and all that stuff. But like I was saying, the guys that are doing life, their main goal since they know they're not going home, their main goal is to hit a yard so they could start doing their time. So that's just a little bit about, you know, the vibes in, in county jail. <laughs> Everyone is stressed out. Anxiety is through the roof. And they just don't know what their, their future is going to be like. <laughs> it's all in the judge's hands, man. In the lawyer's hands as well. This story takes place... Right around the Jody Arias era, right? When she was on trial, um, I was uh, locked up in Max. I had a pretty good celly. And this was, uh, you know, shortly before Jody Arias got sentenced. I'm, I'm thinking like 2012, 2013-ish. Um, <clears throat> the end of 2012 or the beginning of 2013 because uh, that's when I got sent to prison. I was in a few different areas of the jail when i got sentenced uh they housed me in max i don't know why i think because i was in a different part of the jail and i was on i was on the work release and i dropped dirty so i think they waited maybe about a week before they sent me to the tower you know max and um you know you're slammed down the majority of the time the only the only time that we at the time got to see fresh air was on the weekends and we got to get out every Saturday. I don't remember about Sundays. Maybe Sundays too. But Saturdays for sure. Saturday morning. It was mandatory that uh, it was mandatory for us that we hit the yard. And I wanted to, to. When I say hit the yard. I mean go to the outside area of the jail. They escort you shortly before 8 o'clock. And then you know they take you to the, the yard outside. You're out there maybe for like an hour or two or whatever. So while I was in Max in the tower, I was housed next to the head of 
the the head of the white guys. You know, each race, if you're out here on the west side, southwest, it's very political. And there's different different races and there's different cliques, right? And I was housed right next to the main guy for the white guys. Really cool guy. Um, in in the tower, there's a lot of high profile cases. So it, it was really it was a serious situation, right? And it could be dangerous if you get caught up in the mix, if you owe debts, whatever. I mean, jail will be jail. You just got to carry yourself like a man and do the right thing and keep your mouth shut, you know, while you're in there. Otherwise, you're going to have problems for yourself. But anyway, my celly was a 18 year old kid. He caught a case for, you know, first degree murder. And he was in there, um, you know, going through his process. He caught the case when he was 17 uh, on his 18th birthday or sometime around there. They sent him to, you know, the main jail with the, with the big boys, with the adults. Like I was saying, I was next to the head of uh, the white guys. Real cool guy, funny guy. We got to communicate through a vent. It was like a vent. And and you could just kind of communicate with uh, your neighbor or different parts of, uh, of the jail. And it's kind of like your telephone. And so... Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it's all cement. You could hear conversations like in your immediate vicinity. It's loud. Everything echoes and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I, I got to develop a pretty good routine in there and uh, developed it pretty quick. You know, it kind of made time go by pretty pretty quick. So with that being said, just wanted to give you a little rundown of jail versus prison and the the area I was in, you know, in the tower. Max. So anyway, there's this one, this one white boy, you know, he, he gets sent to the tower where we're at. And I remember seeing him at a different part of the jail. I believe, I believe he had some mental health going on, but he knew karate. And whenever we would get to go outside, like today room, I would see him like in the corner doing his drills, not really shadow boxing, but he was going through some karate motions and it was really cool to see. He was like a short, stocky white guy and he, he was just doing his karate stuff. I used to wrestle in high school. So ever since then, I love hand to hand combat and anything like that. So it was really, really cool just seeing that. He was kind of off though. You know, he had something going on up here and, and uh, he was taking medication for that. So, he wasn't really close to any of, you know, any of the white guys, anybody in general. He, he just hung up by himself at a certain part of the day. I think in the morning while we're locked down in our cells, uh, a nurse would come in and she'd hit, there was like two tiers, you know, the first floor and the second floor. And she'd start on the first floor at one end, just go around passing out her medication. She had a cart and she was just passing out the meds for those that need it. So this little karate kid, we're going to call him karate kid. He was maybe a few, few cells down. You know, one day we get word. We all hear that while the nurse opened his cell, the karate kid, it's alleged that he exposed himself in front of the nurse. The nurse kind of freaks out, gives him his meds and, and there's a CO there and they close the door and, you know, and then she completes her, her med pass. And so later on that day, you know, the head of the head of the white guys, my neighbor, he hears about this. He wasn't happy. You know, you're not supposed to obviously expose yourself, but you're really not supposed to do anything that makes your people look bad, you know, makes your race look bad, especially yourself. You just got to be respectful and carry your business while you're in there, right? Just act like a man. Go to court. And mind your business, man. Just be cool with people. I'm sorry, I'm just getting a bunch of eBay notifications. Making sales, right? It's a good thing, but not while I'm recording. Anyway, <laughs> the head of the white guys, my neighbor, we'll just call him the head. You know, I'm, I'm tired of saying the head of the white guys. So the head, you know, he talks to a bunch of people, you know, throughout the throughout the unit, and he wants everybody as a favor, you know, even though I'm not a white guy. I'm not rolled. I'm not with them, right? I'm not rolling with these guys. He just said as a favor, 
you know, we got to keep the whole unit, the whole, the whole run. You got to keep it cool, keep it legit and just professional. Right. So he just asked everybody to keep an eye on this guy. And so the plan was he devised a plan to get this guy, the karate kid. He devised a plan to get this guy out of the unit. And there's only so many ways you could do that. Ultimately, the plan was to have another white guy to smash him, beat up the karate kid. And so fast forward some time, right? Man, I got to hurry up. Fast forward some time. One day on in uh, during the day room. The day room is when you get to come out of your cell for like an hour, hour and a half, whatever. Just watch TV, watch the Jody Arias uh, trial, whatever, right? Play some dominoes, checkers, get a haircut. One day we're all out for day room and I went to go take a shower. Small enclosed area with a curtain. All of a sudden I hear one of the COs that was on duty. I said, get to your cells, everybody get to your cells. And so I was tripping out. I was like, man, I'm in the shower, man. So I had to hurry up, whatever, hurry up in the shower. I tried to uh, like peek out. I saw just a bunch of ruckus going on in the uh, in the day room, just a bunch of ruckus. And it was primarily the white guys, right? Everyone else was, they headed back to, uh, back to the cells and closed the door. So there was only a few white guys out. And so apparently what happened is the head of the white guys, he got in contact with another white guy there that was involved in the mix. He was like the biggest white guy there. He was like the biggest dude there out of all the races. He was like the biggest dude there and a strong guy. Anyway, so what happened is what I hear and what I was told is, um, so anyway, yeah, well, that's going on. I, I get out, draw my stuff, put on my clothes. I'm all wet still. I, I go straight to my cell. Anyway, so as, as time went on, uh, the same day, you know, I get word that, uh, <laughs> that the biggest dude there, while the karate kid was like walking around the day room doing laps, um, so the karate kid was walking, right? And the, the, the big white dude was like walking this way. So they were kind of going to, they were walking towards each other, but the karate kid had no idea what was going on. So anyway, what happened allegedly is the biggest white dude there just clocks the karate kid, just like smacked him and karate kid went down. He didn't even get up. He didn't even try to fight back. He just got caught off guard. And the big dude laid him out. And that's when the CEOs just sent everybody straight to the cells. And so, what are you doing, bub? Anyway, so I tripped out, right? I tripped out. I, oh, my God. I got eBay notifications. I got Omar right here. Man. And I got a haircut suit. And so, that happens, right? And so sometime after that, the karate kid, um, he, he gets rolled out the unit, right? He gets rolled out the unit. Uh, he asks, um, to go to PC, right? He says he doesn't feel safe there, blah, blah, blah. So while everyone is slammed down in their cells, sometime throughout the day, he gets sent out the unit and, you know, I haven't seen him since then. So, ultimately, that mission was complete. The white guys, everybody there in general, all the races, we didn't want anything like that going on. That's just weird. That just causes extra un unwanted energy, right? Because there's people in jail making hooch, doing some other stuff I'm not going to speak on. You know, they're trying to make some money. So, having the extra eyes... Having making the CEOs do their job wasn't a good look. It wasn't. It just isn't wanted. <laughs> it's just not wanted because everyone wants to keep going with their daily routine and doing what they do to to survive, right? So, if somebody from a certain race is 
attracting attention negatively, making the CEOs do their job. That situation, that person is going to get dealt with. Depending on the situation and the severity of the consequence, something's going to happen. To sum it all up, part of me really wishes, really wishes I could have seen that dude get caught. Because you don't do that, man. You don't do that. You don't expose yourself. I'm pretty sure this guy knew right from wrong. You know, he understood directions. He just had something going on. I don't I don't even want to know what he was in jail for. If he's doing that type of stuff, who knows what could happen, man? Who knows what could happen? So, yeah, like I said, I never seen that kid ever again. Sometime after that, I get sent to uh, to prison, you know, and I did my time. I had to do my time. So, in regards to my celly, I only have to do 12 months in prison, right? I got sentenced to two years, but with the 85% and some time served, I only had to do 12 months. So, fast forward time, I get out of prison. And I hop on the county jail website to see what's up with my celly, to see if he hit a yard yet. I just wanted to see what he was doing. So he is still in county, my celly at the time. 18-year-old kid. He was probably like 19 or something, 20, you know, by the time he got sentenced and got sent to prison. So anyway, I got to go to my celly's court, uh, his sentencing, and... It was really cool seeing him, man. And I just can't believe, you know, I already did a year in prison, did what I had to do. I was still on parole, but I wanted to see my celly. And I went to his sentencing and he saw me in the uh, the audience, right in the, in the courtroom with a bunch of people there. And he was so surprised. You know, he told on one of the breaks on his sentencing or one of the court days for the trial, on one of the breaks, like a recess or whatever, he told uh, my cell, he told his lawyer to come and tell me, hi, thank you for being there, all that good stuff. So so that was really cool. And, you know, he's still, uh, he's still locked up right now doing 25 to life. It's crazy, man. It's just really crazy. I pray none of you guys have to go to jail. I pray none of you guys have to go to prison. All of my actions, all of anything bad in my life just stemmed from my drug use, you know, from my addiction. Once them opiates hit, you know, aside from my DUI, I got I got a DUI 21 days after my 21st birthday. But aside from that, anything negative in my life is due to my drug, my drug addiction, <laughs> addiction to opiates, man. If I didn't have them opiates... I did whatever it took to get those opiates. And if I never tried opiates in my life, I know for a fact I wouldn't have this channel. I know for a fact I wouldn't be talking to you guys. And I know for a fact life would be different. But I don't waste time thinking about how my life could have been different. Just wasted energy. It's not for me to know. I'll never know. So whatever, right? All I have is control of today. All I have control over is whether I use or drink or not. And as of right now, my plan is to not do any of that. As of right now, my plan is to go get a haircut, come back and do some work and keep my day full, which is why I do these stories, which is why I do these interviews. And and, and I just hope, I just hope each video I put out, whether it's me right here or an interview, I hope it just touches one person that needs to hear it, needs to see it, right? All of these, all this content that I do, all these stories, interviews, like I still need to hear this, right? I am not involved in AA or NA, but this is the way I am involved. You know, this, all of the stuff that I'm doing in regards to YouTube helps keep me sober. And I hope it's, you know, helping you guys as well. I'm really trying to better my interviewing skills and storytelling skills. And, you know, I'm just trying to loosen up, man. I don't know why. When it comes to these stories, you know, I'm still kind of serious because this is a serious topic. 
But in, in reality, like in life, if we're just talking on the street, I'm pretty chill, pretty funny, goofy guy. So I'm always working on something. And I hope you guys are too. Whatever you need tightening up on, hope you guys are addressing that. Or at least making a plan to, you know, address whatever needs to be tightened up. So, I get a haircut in about 36 minutes. Birdman's calling me. Sorry, Bird, I'll call you right back. But Birdman's calling me. And, uh, yeah, so I got to call Birdman back and get a haircut. Thanks for watching.